Master Music Show. It's the Murder Master Music Show. Fred. It's the Murder Master Music Show. Jay. It's the Murder Master Music you Show. It's the Murder Master Getting Music Show. It's the Murder Master Music Show. It's the Murder Master Caliber Music Show. Seven. It's the Murder Master they used to say Hip hop is dead, but we don't resurrect it You follow what lame stream says, but here it gets rejected If you wearing tight jeans, don't expect to get respected I'm from a time where wearing black was always on your checklist From a time where faggots get checked if they reckless From a time where if you got too much shine, we snatch your necklace This real shit here, Illuminati, fuck the industry We represent the street and they respect our street ministries Hate no shorts and cut the middle man, literally this Hip hop savior, our birth scenes like nativity. This is a place where no one sells out for relevability. And the masses can get a chance to explore more creativity. You gotta be kidding me. If you call that hip hop, niggas with our spades and fluorescent flip flop. We kill a big brother, cause we know he watch. You don't like what I'm doing, then you can suck mine. Oh, and it's you don't. It's the murder master music show. 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 Yeah, we're here at Murder Master Music Show, episode 340. Jesus, man, Jesus, we keep creeping up there. 340, man. You know what I'm saying? And we, uh, we've we already done, uh, shit, 10, something, 10 plus shows this year. We're getting close Hell to yeah. it. After this week, we have done over 10 shows. Usually, we do one it's a week, so on, it, <clears throat> that would only mean four shows in January. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, maybe maybe a couple of weeks we do double episodes or something. Maybe knock out six shows. Man, we're going to be knocking out 20 shows by the time the month's over. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we'll be going all over lately. Man, fucking Brooklyn, Flint, Michigan, Atlanta. Um, right, we've been to Memphis. Everywhere. Uh, Memphis. Yeah, we've been all over. You know, so we're going to uh, head on over to Nashville, Tennessee today. You know what I'm saying? Before, uh, before you bitch. heard Young Buck, you know what I'm saying? Before you heard uh, a lot of these guys, you know, you had dudes in the city that was making music. You had Pistol, you know what I'm saying? Daddy uh-huh. um, Fresh. Um, yeah. A lot of people in, in uh, Nashville, man. There's, so, some of them, I can't, uh, they, they don't come to mind off, off top, but one of the dudes was Green Wave. This guy was putting out music, you know what I'm saying? Long time, man. We're gonna bring him on, and let him tell his story. Um, man, it, 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 it's crazy. I can't even. I can't even begin to explain it. Cause right from Murder Dog Magazine, we had him in there a few times, and, and uh, dude was pretty much like the Master P of uh, Nashville. He was he was blown up, and then oh, something happened. We're gonna let him tell you what happened. Let's bring him on right now, man. What's up, Greenway? What up, man? Man, man first and foremost, uh, welcome to Murder Master Music Show. Um, man, how you been? Yeah, man? You good? Good? yeah, man, I've been working, man. I've been working. Yeah, twenty years, so. twenty years, the twenty years I've done didn't stop me. I, I love this shit, man. Hell yeah, hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? You you are uh, you, you are um, from Nashville. What was the rap scene like when you first started? Uh, it was, man, it was, I mean, it was lovely. It was lovely. You know what I'm saying? We was doing the gangster rap, me, Pistol, Cool, Daddy Fresh, uh, Quantic Cast, Bottom Boys. You know, we was doing our thing, city, man. City at that time, you know what I'm saying, you had a lot of legends. Um, you know, what was the atmosphere like? Were you guys all working with each other? Were you guys, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, pretty cool with each other at that time? Or? Oh yeah, oh yeah. We all. I mean, I mean, you know, I got I got Corny on the phone call grinding. Uh, me and Fresh are supposed to be doing a whole album together. We've been like chewing it up with, with each other. So you know, 
And I'm working with a couple young cats right now. Yeah, yeah. Cause they yeah. all they all consider me as the OG of the game, so you know I'm messing with them. Yeah. Well, you uh, you know what I'm saying you you uh, uh you see the game how it is today. You know what I'm saying compared to what it was in the '90s, man. What, what what's the biggest change that you noticed? It's oversaturated. They didn't made the they made the equipment the equipment so cheap to get now. You know, so everybody can do it. I mean, well, I ain't got a problem with it though, cause I love you know I love to see. Young cats do their thing, man. So you know, and it's an honor. It's an honor for them to call me in to the studio and do tracks with them. That's an honor right there in itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it, it says that you're still relevant. You're still, uh, uh, you know, what I'm saying, making noise and, and and doing what you do. So they respect you. You know, what I'm saying that's got to mean something. Considering yeah, it do, it do, it do, man. It's an honor, man. Know? It's an honor, man. Put a smile. He put a smile in my heart, to, to be honest with you. Yeah. And he's like, oh, gee, oh, yeah. man, come on, man, do this track with me, man. Do this track with me. How much you charge to do a track? <laughs> you know, I'll work with him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Man, uh, for, for for our listeners that don't know, uh, you know, you, you were putting out albums. I, I remember uh, you was up in the Murder Dog. You was doing your thing. And uh, you are really uh, making some noise, you know what I'm saying? And then... Uh, <clears throat> Man, you caught the charge, man. What what happened? Uh, you know what I'm saying? I was, you know, I, I'm saying I, I had one foot in the rap game, one foot in the drug game. The police kicking on my door, so you know, I, you know, I shot two of them. So I had to go, you know, what I'm saying. Plus, I had a federal case, so I had to go lay down and do 18 years. So mm. you know, I, that that like stopped me, you know, what I'm saying I was hot in that. Me and Priority was talking. Me and Dave Wine and Priority, we was talking. The one same dude who signed Master P and him. And Easy E and all of them, Dave Winer, in the movie, you know what I'm saying, the movie you'll see him. So, you know what I'm saying, me and him were chopping it up already, so I probably would have been rolling with with them if I wouldn't have got locked up. Yeah. Yeah, you you were, I mean, because that was right at the time. What was it? This had to have been around 97, 98, 99, somewhere around there. 98, not, the, the beginning of 98. Beginning mm-hmm. of 98, okay, perfect, man, because 97, P and them blew up the game. The South was on fire. Cash money was blowing up. And these guys wanted to sign you. They wanted to put Nashville on. Um, how close were you to inking a deal before everything went down? Man, it wasn't. To be honest with you, it wasn't that far. It was like maybe maybe six months to a year. And man. I probably would have been wrong. I probably would have been a priority, man. So, so you're in talks with priority. You know what I'm saying? And, and you're also in the dope game or whatever, doing what you're doing. Um, and uh, one day. You know what I'm saying? The laws come, uh, and they, what are they kicking your door? I remember the door, reading, I remember uh, reading uh, in Murder Dog. I think it was in Murder Dog. I think it was a murder. Where you uh, you said they didn't identify themselves. What, what what happened with that? No man, I had a I had a I had a big screen TV turned up in the living room. So you know what I'm saying? When I woke up, all I heard my dog getting kicked. Man, I thought it was a jack boy, so I wasn't I wasn't finna allow you know me to get in a situation where you finna rob me. Right. So yeah. Or yeah. pop you or something, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's right. So I handled my business, that was it. So yeah, you were in fear of your life. You thought it was a you know what I'm saying, a kick though basically. Somebody coming in and take your shit and then you defending yourself. And uh That's right. And it, it, you said it was two cops? That got hit? No, nah, it was a whole no, nah, it was a whole squad. <laughs> it was a whole drug oh, squad. Yeah. They had a search they had a search one on my house, man. They said somebody within seventy two hours seen drugs in my hand in the house. Mm-hmm. So it is so, what it so is. They come, they come they come in the door and uh uh you pop off some rounds at them. How many of them were hit? Two of them were hit. One of them got Two shot in the thigh. One of them got shot in the thigh, and one of them got shot in the vest. One got shot in the thigh, mm-hmm. one got shot in the vest. Did you get? Did they yeah. fire back at you? No, nah, they didn't fire they back. Didn't. Oh, they didn't fire back. No, nah, they didn't fire back. back. Fucked up and got out of there. I imagine. Um, they arrest you. Uh, uh, you said you had to do how many years? Eighteen. Eighteen. Did you? Okay, so so ninety eight. So uh, uh, when did you? Well, get I had out? a. Well, I had a. But I had a I had a conspiracy case with the feds 
that's mm-hmm. where I, that's where all the the big time came in because really the police shooting they ain't giving number two eight year sentences running running consecutively I mean concurrently and then they gave me mm-hmm. you know the feds came in the feds came in they've been investigating my co defendant for like ten years he was under under a ten year investigation so I was like four years into that investigation. Damn. Uh, yeah, that's fucked up. So they they was plotting, they was they was coming after you. Um, oh yeah, they was coming out. I mean, they, you know, they don't really want no rap music to come up out of here, man. No, so by the time right, they got uh, me down, by the time they got me downtown into 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 their building, they already had me on the news already, playing my music and everything. Well, I, I, I could imagine them. Uh, what did you say, Brad? I was gonna say, huh? did they use your, your did they use your music against you at all in court? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They take my court defendant to federal court. They kept playing my music. Look, he said your name right there. He said your name right there. <laughs> so you know, mm. it is what it is, man. Right, that's how they play the game and shit. I'm about, I'm about to say, coming from Nashville and being a hip hop artist, I know they y'all had to experience a, a, a lot of hate with that being the country music capital of yeah, the world. Like, how like hard my was it there. really for y'all to make y'all moves with y'all music outside of the hood? And yeah, you know, like my partner, like my partner, uh, my partner, Bottom Boy Records, they they went through the same thing when they locked them up. They put they they put their music and stuff all over the news because they talking about killing the police and and they said his name in it. So you know, it they they put them put, they put them all on the news and gave them a million dollar bond too. So you you do time? How, how much time? Total time did you do, Greenway? Eighteen years. Oh, I got man, locked up. Man. I got locked up beginning of ninety eight. And I got out last November. Damn, damn. I mean, that's almost you know X rated, X rated uh, from Black Market. He's been in there twenty five years. We're hoping he gets out. Hopefully this year he's up for uh, uh, the board again. So hopefully he gets out this year. But you did an eighteen year stretch. Pooh Man did a thirteen year stretch. We had him on the show. Is this your first interview since uh, you've been locked up, or since you got out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be honest with you, it's my first. It's my first. National interview. Wow. There's been some, it's been some cats around here that interviewed me, though. And what, uh, you know what I'm saying, when you when you got out, I mean, because you, you're still trying to, are you still trying to adjust to society, I would imagine? Uh, Man, I'm working, man, and this is like my first time in my life working. Because, you, know, you know, I've been selling drugs since like 14, 14 to 23 I sold drugs. So this is like my first time working nine to fives and shit. So wow. I'm getting, I'm getting used to it. I'm getting used to it, man. Yeah. I ain't yeah, got the man. money. I ain't got the money. I ain't got the money that I used to have. But you know, it's just cool to be free. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Man. We're glad you glad are free. you made it back home, man. For real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thank y'all, man. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? 18 years. Did you uh you meet any cats in there that uh you know what I'm saying had some talent? Yeah, I met uh, 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 Kick the Sneak. I mean, hold up, hold up. My fault. I met I met the Jacker from the Bayside. Oh, yeah, yeah. Rest yeah, rest rest the Jacker. Yeah. 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 Used, to be, used to be with Messy Marv and all them. Yeah. I mm-hmm. met him. Yeah. Sheebo's he was in the, same, in the same unit with me. Oh, man. Yeah. I think he'd get out by another... I think he'd get out by another year or two. Now, the Jacker... Um... He, he yeah, passed he, away. He killed, he got man. Murdered. Yeah, he got murdered a couple years ago, man. He was out. Yeah. No, nah, nah, it's the other dude named the Jacker. Oh, okay. Okay. He's, You're not talking he's about the other guy. No, uh-uh. He used to be with San Quinn and Messing Mom now. And JT, the bigger figure. He's from that, that area. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about, I believe. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, that's what's up. You know what I'm saying? But so 340 Murder Master Music Show. That was Green Wave. Uh, brand new music from Green Wave, man. It's, you know, like I said, I remember, uh, you know what I'm saying, the interviews and the murder dog and, and all that stuff. Man. All that stuff. You really were putting it down in the 90s, man. It's good to see you. You're making music again. Um, that's what's up, man. Did, did you do a lot of writing when you were down? Yeah, I done a lot of writing, and I ain't really used nothing that I wrote. 
Uh-huh. So I got out, man. Got out, man, and you know, you know, it was a, it was like a little bit of different vibe. So I had to get with it. So I just I just wrote everything new. Yeah, yeah. 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 That was a dope track right there. It sounds like you picked up right where you left off, man. You know, oh, it was yeah, like yeah. making music again. You know what I'm saying? Getting in the uh, getting in the lab, man. It had to been a great feeling. Oh, it's beautiful, man. It's beautiful. It's yeah. beautiful, man. Hell yeah. Well, we got a uh, uh, we got a caller here. This is the homie Finn from France. He uh, he knows a lot about rap. I know he knows you uh, your music. Finn, you know. Oh, how you yeah, doing, yeah. man? Hi, hi, Scott. Hi, hi, Mike J. Hi. What uh, up with the same? Hi, good bread. Yes, this is Richter. How you do? Yeah. Yeah. T- tell us about the the song that wrote. Uh, was a big hit back in the day. A big hit, big hole hit back in the day. Uh, also about the the Deep Blue South song, Deep in the Game, uh, on Nashville Underground album. It was. Uh, True deep south feel, the, the deep in the game, how the music was played. Oh uh, yeah, you're talking about deep in the game. Uh, yeah. That was my partner. That was my partner. That was my partner, Juan Juan from Bottom Boy Records. But that Jow song, man, I came home. I came home from the club, drunk one night, and made the beat. And then I woke back up in the morning. I was gonna touch it some more. I said, No, nah, I think that sounds just right. So my dude, them South A Mafia, they came over there. I gave them the beat. We went to the studio and recorded it. And man, I didn't think it was gonna be that big, man. But it it wound up being real big. I'm talking. About, I can go in Kentucky and they playing it all in Kentucky, all all in the streets, you know. And it was it was like big, man. That song that song became real big. I didn't expect that song to get that big, but it did. Yeah. When you listen to it, you. You can feel the, the deep south. You can feel the live music, the live south. The what now? Yeah, when you listen to it, the uh, game, you can feel the deep south. You can feel the the live music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And also, oh, yeah. the song the drought. That's what got me hooked on them too back in the day. The drought. I remember. Yeah, uh, I remember. Yeah, that job was nice, man. I I met some dudes from Gary and down, about three dudes from Gary and down in in the in the federal joint, and they were like, man, we used to bump, we used to bump that song, man. They said, man, that song was hidden. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I said, appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, when I was at when I was in Atlanta, Atlanta at the Freak Neek, I gave some dudes from Miami. They was in a can of green a can of green bin with gold things on it. I gave them to that. I gave them that CD like. 11 o'clock in the morning, and I was like, man, put number five on. So then by 10, 11 o'clock that night, I called them again. I ran into them again. They still playing the drought. They still were playing it. Yeah. I said, man. Yeah. man. So they must have really, really loved it. <clears throat> well, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, man, I'm trying to. I mean, you know, I'm back in, man. I ain't number one album in deep right now, man. I'm working on some stuff, so, you know. Hopefully, hopefully I can do something that 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 can rattle some heads again. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, what we just heard is fire, man. We're gonna hear some more here in a little bit, but man, that's that's what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? You, you you're back at it. You're doing your thing, man. That's what's up, man. Yeah. Hell yeah. Can you tell us also about the album Get a Monster on and his cover? It's supposed to streak them a whole life. Get a monster. Oh, Ghetto Monster, yeah. Yeah, see, yeah, I didn't get to put Ghetto Monster out right. The album was done, and I got locked up. I was messing with uh, Southwest Wholesale Distribution. So uh, I went on and put it out like 2000 while, while, while I was locked up. So I didn't really get to promote that album and do it the way I really wanted to do it. But I couldn't hold, I couldn't hold it, I couldn't hold it back because it needed to be out. So I went on and put it out. Yeah, the cover yeah, crazy. Yeah, I'm glad I put it out. I'm glad I put it out, man. Cause a lot of people said they, a lot of people told me in Nashville they was they was like they was like they they thing in like 2001, 2002. They played the hell out of it. So you know. Oh yeah, yeah. That's just banging, man. That's just uh, it's classic. 
And just like Shane was saying, your covers back in the day, too. Did you go to Pen and Pixel for them? Oh, yeah, I went to Pen and Pixel. Yeah. Matter of fact, I was the first. I was the, I was, the, I was kind of like a, like a leadership in the music business around here. When I went, when I went to Pen and Pixel and got my album cover done, can you believe it that everybody that had a record label here, everybody went behind me and got a Pen and Pixel cover. Everybody when they, when they see my first, right? Yeah, yeah. When they see my first cover, man, everybody fall right behind me and went and got one. I, I want to ask you uh, about Pistol. Everybody knows Pistol. Um, you know, he went, uh, he signed a deal with Easy E, Ruthless Records. You know, saying what was your relationship with uh, Pistol like? Oh, me, me and Pistol, me and Pistol was straight. I mean, we didn't talk a whole lot, but when we when we bumped in, when we bump heads, we you know we chop it up. Yeah. Yeah, Pistol, Pistol, yeah, Pistol, my dude. I talked to him. I talked to him two or three times while I was locked up within the last four years. I when, talked to him a couple he, times. When he got signed to Ruthless, you know, what I'm saying, was that did that give a lot of hope to different guys in, in Nashville at that time that was rapping? Oh yeah, it gave hope to me. I was like, I was like, oh man, <laughs> they're rolling in my six four. They done it. That's what. That's that. That's what. That's what easy. That's why easy picked him up. They rolled in my six four used to be on the box, so you know California had the box too, and you know they ride a lot of six fours. So when they seen that video, you know, that video was kind of like hot there. So he he snatched him. Yeah, yeah I hate I hate the I hate the easy die man. I got a tattoo. I got I got a tattoo of easy on my arm. Yeah, yeah, easy was one of my favorites, man. Did you want to sign with Ruthless as well? No, I wanted to sign with Priority. <laughs> You want, yeah, you want to really. Do I your, want you want to do yeah, that. Yeah, really, really, really be honest with you. Really be honest with you. If if Rufus would have came my way, I would have signed with him. Yeah. You know, I would have signed. I would have signed with with no limit. Yeah. Oh, anybody yeah. that yeah, really, oh, yeah. they really got it. Yeah, anybody that. Yeah. yeah. Signed for sure. I thought because I'm like, man, this guy's tailor made for no limit. That's I mean, you know. You, you, I always, I always say you reminded me of like a Nashville version of Master P. Yeah, well, a lot of people say they call, what they call me Nashville Master P. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I wasn't the only one. Okay, okay. So they, yeah. Yeah, Master P, man, man, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. Master P motivated me, man. When oh, I yeah, see, yeah. when I see that dude, and I was bumping Master P always since Mama's bad boy. Yeah. And I opened up yeah, and when he came here. I opened when he came here. I got to open up for him. The California dudes, them, they put me in the door and let me open up for him. Oh wow! Did you get to yeah, chop I really, it up at all? No, I ain't get to chop it up with him. I got to chop it up with three six with three six mafia because we was in the we was in we was in the same room together, the VIP room. But Mass P and them got their tour bus and came in, done their thing, and went back right back to their tour bus. So I ain't get I ain't get to chop it up with him. Yeah. But one of my dude, but one of my dudes had me, had me while I was available to get in the studio with them. But 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 what they wanted, what they was charging, it was like all I had. So I was like, no, nah, I got to hold up on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's huge. I'll tell you what. Let's let's give them another track. We got a couple here. We got uh, Chicken Heads, uh, Risk It All. Uh, which which one are you feeling right now, Greenway? Oh, bump that chicken head, man. That's me and my dude Buckshot Peter, man. He locked, he just got locked back up, man. So hopefully, hopefully, he getting ready to come See, back Buckshot out. Peter, need him. Yeah, Buckshot Peter. I put him on my Nash Underground Chapter Two. He had a song on there. Hey, you know, you know I got Nash him. I got Underground him. Chapter One. Do you have any copies nah, of that shit? No, nah, he was on Chapter Two. He was on Chapter Two. Uh, yeah, he was so on Chapter about- Two. The first one. Do you have any copies of the first one? Man, I ain't got no copies of that, but it's on it's on YouTube though. I was I was gonna say uh, reason why because I want to put it on eBay or Amazon and sell it for like four hundred dollars. <laughs> oh man, I ain't it's got one. I ain't got no. Did you see that? Man, show? the only thing I got the only thing I got left in the house, man. I got I got three cassettes left. Oh hell yeah, hell yeah, yeah. That's brand new. Man. Yeah, I've been getting, I've been, I've been getting some overseas sales. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, you, you, you know, man, they remember, man. You know, what I'm saying they, they, like cats like Sin that's on the phone right now from France. 
they read the Murder Dog so, Field fan, and they probably didn't have access to those CDs, you know what I'm saying, back then. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he did here in the States. So that's why they became right. collector's items. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And what's so and what's so cool is that y'all still making music. You know what I'm saying? Like that that that's the most important shit. And when you hear it, it ain't like okay, there's some old data. No, y'all still rocking this shit. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. What, that's what I love about the legends that's that's continuing to do. And for you to be locked up for 18 years and to come out and still have that same drive to want to do the music, man, and not be on some flake shit. It ain't like you hopped out and tried. It don't sound like you're trying to trend chase. And follow what's going on out here right now. You stand in your lane, and that shit still knocked. That last little song, that beat was banging, man, for real. Thanks, man. I, like I got that. that I got that from my. I got that from my dude Raw Tune. His uh, yeah, his daddy, his daddy, his daddy owned owned like one of the hottest clubs here, and he be you know what I'm saying. He been taught to DJ since he was like a little baby. So that's what he do. He DJ and make beats. That's what's up. Yeah, but I hope, man, I hope one day, man, I hope one day I can get a tour, old, a tour overseas, man. It, it would be real nice, man. Yeah. I'd love to come over there. I'd love to come over there and rock with them. Yeah. Germany, Germany, France, you know what I'm saying, Scotland, all that stuff, like all them areas right, right so. there. I would, I would love to come rock with them. I'm about to say so for our overseas listeners, get them in your city, man. Book them. Get him over there. Yeah, he's letting y'all know him, he, he want to come over France, there and do man. some shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shit, <laughs> a lot of these rappers in the, in the flesh, you know what I'm saying? You can, uh, yeah, it, yeah. Even in Europe, sometimes it, it respects much your your work than in USA sometimes. They do. Yeah. Man. He's right, man. They respect yeah. you guys more over there than the yeah. motherfuckers here do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and that's crazy. Cause they're still bumping '90s music like it's brand new over there. Over here, they're on that. They listen to the mumble rappers and that swag and that trap shit. You know what I'm saying? The repetitive stuff. They're not letting none of the real ones back in. Why do you think you know what I'm saying? Reality rap is taking a back seat to this dumbed down, like fucking bubblegum bullshit. I don't know, man. Hey, that's a that's a hard question to answer. You know, I got yeah. out, man, and for my first time going to the club, when that new shit come on, man, people my age, they like going crazy. So I'm like, man, what the, you know, but it is what it is, man. You know, it's, right. it's daytime, it's daytime, man, but at the same time, I'm going to do what I do. And, you know, all the rappers that feel like me going to do what they do. Like when Quantic Cash put his, out, put his last album out, man, I had, I had to call him and tell him, man, I said, man, hey, man, I say I'm proud of you for keeping for keeping the Cashville sound. You know what I'm saying? You didn't try to change up or, or nothing like that. So you know, nice. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Like Juneberg did, like Capital Punishment Click, like Cool Daddy Fresh. Yeah. Oh, Juneberg, that's my dude right there, man. That's my dude. Yeah. Me too. Yeah, we gotta have Cool Daddy Fresh on the show too, man. We. We got to hit Nashville up a little bit. We haven't really had too many Nashville mm-hmm. rappers out there other than, like, Jelly Roll, maybe a few other guys. Um, you know what I'm saying? So Nashville's definitely a spot we need to get at. Cause, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah underground, underground. What's called Souls of Sin from Nashville. Huh? You got an underground group who calls Souls of Sin. You know, remember that? What's their name? Uh, so those scenes they are in Ghetto Revelations from 98. Oh, I, ain't, oh, I ain't heard them yet. I ain't heard them, man. There's so many people. There's so many dudes rapping here now, man. It's like, you know, you know I ain't I ain't met number 20, but 25% of them since I've been out. Right. Like you, said, shit, you, you get out and there's so many people doing it now. I was about to ask you, like, uh, so pretty much when you had got locked up, you did 18 years. I look at it like this because... Uh, my son is 18 years old, so I'm thinking, what was out back when he was a baby till now? I bet mean, was y'all pretty tied into the music scene when you locked up, or you just kind of like y'all just stick to what y'all know, or is y'all getting new music when y'all in jail and then coming out and the game and drastically changed since from when you went in? To I mean, when you got out. I mean, you know they got. I mean, they got. I mean, I mean, we got radio. We got radio, BT and MTV and all that in in the face. So you mm-hmm. know. uh you know, I watched the I watched the game change. I watched the DMX come through, the Jaru come through. 
Because <laughs> that was like right around that time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The late the late nineties, I, I say all the way up to about two thousand and five. I think Fifty Cent was probably like the last real on some G shit that that motherfucker uh, uh, took serious. Besides, you know, you had a few after that 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 motherfucker still uh, look up to his G's and shit. But it was like a different, like that was the end of the era uh, of, of the real gangster rap motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you ask me. Yeah. And game. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna take nothing away. Yeah, I ain't gonna take nothing away from from, from none of the other dudes that's still doing that gangster shit. But just to me, in my eyes, like I ain't bought a, I don't think I bought a, a actual uh, CD, a industry CD, uh, from the store since like around oh five oh six. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like all the shit that come out now is like shit. I still got all the shit that you know what I'm saying. I, I I rather listen to the shit I grew up on than have the new shit. Or I like to listen to new shit from the guys that's still doing it. Like I like yeah, yeah, always so. say, we hear good music all the fucking time. We just not hearing it on like the mainstream radio. We gotta, you oh, know, we gotta dig a little deeper. You ain't gonna hear yeah. this on no mainstream. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. why we like we like they, they can't feel like yourself still putting out dope quality music. Everybody we have on the show is still putting out good music. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's yeah. good to uh, mm-hmm. catch and know about it. You know. um, what about what are your plans for uh, for 2017? You got a, uh, another project you get ready to drop or do anything? Or? Yeah, yeah, I'm working on one right now, man. I'm about eight songs. I'm about seven, eight songs in deep right now. So I'm trying to do like I'm gonna do like 18 and pick out the top 14. Oh hell yeah! Hell yeah, man. Well, I yeah. Think when you drop that, please uh, please let us know because we wanna we wanna bring you on again and play some of them songs too. Oh man, I got you, man. I got you. Yeah, I got uh, you, man. It's all it's all love here. Yeah, I'm glad uh, I'm glad you you uh, uh, agreed to come on the show, man. Because we you know we, we've done through almost 350 of these and we're trying to interview five, six, seven thousand motherfuckers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you're one of the dudes. Yeah, we're basically what we are agreeing with. We are the murder dog right now. You know what I mean? We're the audio yeah, murder dog. Yeah. You know, yeah. I spent 15 years there, and, and my peers that that work with me on the show, like Mac and and everybody that calls in, like Sin and Brandon, they uh they represent the music from all over the country too. It's not just about one spot. Or and you remember how the murder dog was? You could. Oh yeah, man, 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 hey, man. I love yeah. Murder Dog Magazine. Shout out to Black Dog. Cause Black Dog, as I got locked up, uh, I called Black Dog and gave him my address, man. He he made he made sure that I stayed in contact with all the underground music because he kept sending me, you know, all the magazines. Oh, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. When they left, though, you know, there was a void that needed to be filled. And, and, uh, because there's so many cats. If you look at our archive, there's so many cats that nobody's reaching out to. People have kind of forgot about them, and we want to make sure that this shit is preserved and people know who the hell that some of you guys are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. yeah, we hitting up everybody, man, that made an impact on that shit. If you liked one song from a motherfucker, they story worth being heard, you know what I'm saying? Especially if they still making music. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and you know, it's all you know what I would do? to what they, what they forcing on you. You know what I mean? And you know, Go out here you know what I would do? Again. You know what I would do when I was out? When I, when I was out back then, when I go in the record store, I look for all the cover. I look for all the covers that are tight. I'd be like, man, I'm going to check this out. I'm going to see what this sounds like. That's how I, I got to learn out by, by, PS, by PSK-13 <laughs> and stuff like that, yeah. man, because I bought, I bought the album just because of the cover. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty yeah, I always be saying this shit, too, though. Like, shit, I bought so many of them, and, and, and back then, most most of the albums went with the cover. You know what I'm saying? Like it ain't a whole lot of good yeah. concept albums no more. You know, so I couldn't wait to open that bitch up, read all the notes and shit, the producer credits and the shout outs and all that old shit. You know what I'm saying? Like it was part of an experience of getting an album. You felt you felt good, yeah. especially when CDs came out because them bitches was like twenty five dollars a pop when they first came yeah. out, brand new. You know what I'm saying? So. You wasn't just going to buy them like you can get a four or five dollar tape or a ten dollar twelve dollar tape. You get yeah, you bought a CD. Is it was like buying a you know a, a vinyl album. Right. Like I carry them all the and shit. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I bought many albums based on the cover. 
bus down there. Hell yeah. Dead. You know, say you see a dog standing on a bitch's head. Why not? Five pieces of good music, right? That's what, that's <laughs> right. what made me. That's what. Five pieces that's what made me start messing with pen and pictures. Yeah. That's what made me start yeah. messing with pen and pictures when I seen them covers, man. I was looking. I was looking on all of them. On all of them. All of them uh, CDs I was buying. And I was like, man, pen and pictures. Who is they? So one 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 day, my dude was like, man, call them, man, see what the price is, man. So when I called them, they was like, you know. We can get you a good one for like sixteen hundred. So I'm like, let's roll then. <laughs> so mm-hmm. you know, and that I that actually went down, I went down to Houston, you know what I'm saying, and, and met them and everything. Yeah, yeah man. that's what's up. And, 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 you know, you, you, you was doing a lot of business with them at the time, and you know, I imagine their offices uh, were pretty uh, pretty dope to see all them covers and stuff on the walls. Oh yeah, man. Uh, oh yeah, and one of them, uh, uh, one of the dudes in the office he had. So he had my post up. He had my post up in a frame in his in his office. Wow. Mm. Oh, yeah. And, then I, and then I got another partner. I got another little white partner here named named Steve. Uh, he got an office too, and he got my post in the office in the frame. And that and that like freaked me out. I said, like, "Damn, man!" But but he had it though. Shit, we and seen we seen uh Sam with the t shirt with your uh, album cover on the front of that. Yeah, I see, I see that too. I see that on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, I'm like, see, he ain't got all them shits, man. <laughs> got an album cover, a shirt for just about every dope album. Man, <laughs> hell yeah, that shit dope. Hey, and yeah, I, I like that. I like that. Man. that shit out. Yeah, yeah I Pinsley like the that. Laying that shit out. He's good to represent overseas. Mm-hmm. When I, cause when dude, when his, when my partner, uh, uh, Spinner Man turned to, turned the album cover and tell me, my other partner was like, man. Why don't you Why don't you do my photographer? I said, Nah, man. I said, Nah, I love this shit. Cause this shit like some pen and pixel shit. I said, I love this shit. I'm keeping this album cover. And the album yeah, cover is really yeah. nice, man. Yeah. You know, I want y'all to go check it out cause it's nice. It's real nice. Tell everybody about this. Uh, this, this project that's out right now, Greenway. <laughs> the real talk, no pill talk. Is that the one? Oh yeah. Well, well, I got the I got the real pill talk note. I got the real talk no pill talk slang from a from a dude from Shreveport, Louisiana. It just sounded real slick and real cool. Cause we be at the poker table and you know, like we have an argument by the hand, and a dude try to touch that money, and he be like, "Man, look, man, don't touch that money, man. I'm telling you, man, real talk no pill talk. Don't touch that money. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> and uh, I just I just like it cause the way he say it all the time. So I said, I said, I got, I said, I got to use that man. Real talk, no pill talk. Yeah. And then I hear a lot of girls that's pill heads. When I be saying that on Facebook, when I first got out, they'll get mad at me. Like, man, why you say real talk, no pill talk, folks? I said, man, look, I'm talking about, cause I'm talking real talk. And a lot of these dudes out here be talking, they be on these pills and shit, and they be doing fake talking. They be talking so much shit, and they don't know what they say said the next yeah. day. But you know, I'm giving you some real talk. Plus, I'm giving game up. I'm trying to teach these young dudes uh, that's in the drug game, like, man, get, man, get your money up and get up out of this shit, you know what I'm saying, or you're going to go down that same road I've been I've been down, you know what I'm saying, the 18 years ain't no joke, man, I miss my kids' life and all that, even though even though three of my kids in college and stuff like that, and they doing good, but see, I miss that part. You know, when I first got to my first, when I first got to my first 100000 I supposed to just got the game and made something happen with that $100,000, but I tried to keep going and go for another hundred thousand, and that's what that game risk it all, risk it all. That's what they're talking about, about you know about everything that I've done out here, and basically nobody really gave the love back that they that, that they should have when I got out. You know what I'm saying? Because I I was paying like about three or four girls. I paying their rent, car payments, and all type of shit because I was I was getting money, so it wasn't no problem to me. I ain't had no problem showing love, but then I didn't got out. It's like y'all ain't showing me no love back. So I'm telling these dudes, man, when you go down, man, these bras gonna leave your ass and they gonna they gonna go they're gonna go to the next nigga. So you know the they risk it all, man, it's a serious song, man. It really is. Yeah, yeah, let's give like them that. that. Let's give them that right now, T Rock. Sounds like a, yeah. uh something with a lot of substance. Now risk it all, this sound the uh, real talk, no pill talk as well, right? Yeah, that's on the real talk, no pill talk. Man, everybody go get that, man. Where today you said it's on CD, baby, uh, um, 
you got like a, uh, a CD, website or anything they can go to, or is it right on the yeah CD, CD baby page? yeah CD uh, CD buyers right there. I strongly suggest anybody listening, you know, what I'm saying you got an album, get ready to come out. You want a feature, and get at this man right here. He's been doing it for many, many years. You know, what I'm saying one of the best out of Nashville, that's for sure. And there's a lot of talent over there, man. A lot of fucking Black and J. Uh, man, there's so many people over there. I can't even, you know, certain world click, certain world click. Who's been broke out? Yes, broke out doing solo. Yeah. yeah. So it was one of the first. It was one of the first dudes to get up. Got about a lot of many fresh tracks. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know. See, now that you touched down, have you connected with any of those rappers from back? I mean, you said Cool Daddy Fresh. Y'all got a project coming out together? Yeah, we we ain't worked on it yet, but we can, you know, we, you know, he doing a lot of stuff. I'm doing a lot of stuff, so we gotta take time to get it in there. Cause we mess around with a lot of the same dudes now, that, and we record in a lot of the same dude studios. So we gotta, we just gotta get in, and lock in. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Well, if you can't holler at uh, Cool Daddy Fresh for us, let him know we would like to interview him on the show. Uh, Pistol okay, too. I, okay, I do that. I appreciate I do that, man. man. Real, real talk, man. Because, you know, Nashville's a spot that needs to be uh, showcased, too. Uh, they kind of only mention Young Buck, you know what I mean? And there's so much more. Not to take nothing away from him, but, you know, there's a lot of other guys out there, too, that need to get some recognition. But you know what? You know what made me really love Young Buck, man? Because young, young Buck did an interview with Murdoch Magazine, and they asked him, what music motivated him, and uh, and he spoke on me. And it really made me feel. Good. Yeah, they really made me feel good. It was a G unit. It was a G. Huh? A G unit platinum artist to, to say you yep. were an influence. No, yeah. Make you feel good. Oh yeah, man. A dude, a dude had the Murdoch magazine. He said, man, I, he said, give me about a couple of days, man. I'm gonna give it to you. I know you're gonna want to keep it once you see it. So when he brought that to me, man, I was like, hell yeah, I'm keeping it. <laughs> yeah, it really made me feel good, man, to see Young Buck speak on me. Yeah, what, what year was this, uh, Greenway? Oh, about 2003, something like that, when that when the first G-Unit album came out. Yeah. Well, now, did, he, now, did you ever talk to him? Yeah, yeah, I, I, mean, I mean, I knew him. But I ain't really just talk to him because, you know, he came over to the spot with some people that that I, that I messed with. But he was like young though. He's young, but was like 15, 16 years old, you know. So you know, we just said what's up, and that was about it. Because I ain't I ain't know he was doing music. But my dude and them, they had a record label too, and they was messing with Cash Money now. And this was, you know, what I'm saying like what early nineties. Oh yeah, yeah, it was like ninety seven. 97, 96, and stuff like that. I used to see him around, but he was like 15, 16 years old, and I didn't even know he was rapping. Well, but he used to be my dude now. He used to be my dude, Tim, them all the time. Yeah, this was before, way before 50 Cent and the Gene and all that and Cash Money. Oh, yeah, way before, way before 50 Cent, yeah. You know what I'm saying? He, uh, yeah, yeah, he done a lot, man. He done a lot of things, and, and uh, yeah, that's what's up. Maybe, maybe now that you're out, Two of y'all can work together. You know what I'm saying? Well, I ran into they, him in the federal. They, I ran into him. I ran into him since I've been out in the federal federal court building. So, you know, we gotta go up and take drug tests. So I ran into him and we took a picture together and that was about it. You know what I'm saying? We didn't get to really talk on over talk on no business because he was leaving and he was leaving and I was coming. Yeah. So you know, I ain't really got to chop it up with him, but I'm I'm gonna catch him. I'm gonna catch him and chop it up with him. Hell yeah, hell yeah, that'd be a dope collaboration right there. You know what I'm saying? Why not? Uh, I, mean, if I, was him, I would love to to work with someone who influenced me, you know. So, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm talking about right there. Um, man, I'll tell you what, Greenway, we're going to uh, we're gonna close off the show. Uh, once again, I really appreciate you for uh, calling in and uh, chopping it up with us. You know, so we'd love to have you on again in the future. Um I'll tell you what, man, we got some more tracks up here. I'm going to let you pick one for us to play. 
Um, this is what we got right here. We got uh, <clears throat> well, we already played the game. Is dead riding with a hitter? The truth, real ass. Which one do you want to roll with? Some serious fucking heat. Right here in 2017, the dude's been locked down 18 years. He comes out to joint swinging, hasn't missed a beat. And I look forward to uh, yeah. all the upcoming stuff he has, man. Welcome him on the show anytime. That's a, that's a real dude right there. You know I'm saying? Glad he came through. Man, this show's working out great, man. We've been knocking on shows every fucking day, nonstop. For every fucking day. Nonstop on you bitches. We ain't stopping, friends. For a few weeks, man. Yeah, tomorrow we got the Outlaws. You know what I'm saying? Uh, mm-hmm. Shit. Here I go again forgetting what the fuck we got all week. But if you want to know when I lose my fucking mind and I can't tell you, go to UGSForLife.com, click on the exactly. schedule button, and there it is. You know what I'm saying? Anything you want to know about what we're doing, to UGSForLife.com. Okay. We just knocked out the Green Wave show. Hell of a show right there. Uh, tomorrow we got the Outlaws. You know what I'm saying? Wednesday, we got Yuck Mouth. Uh, Thursday, right. we got yep. um, Land of the Immortal Soldiers. And Friday, mm-hmm. we got uh, Doggy Diamonds. You know what I'm saying? From Doggy Diamonds TV. Big uh, internet uh, following this guy has. Uh, does a, a live uh, podcast type deal. And then also in the second half of that show is uh, Memphis legend uh, Lil Noid. You know what I'm saying? He's going to be mm-hmm. on the show. He was like one of the first guys that Juicy J worked with back in the day. Um, so, man, we got a whole week full of shows, and then, then kicking it off on the, third, uh, the 30th, which will be the following Monday, we got Rude Boy from Psychopathic. He's a, you know, he's an artist, but he's also a wrestler. You know, this dude's wrestled Terry Funk and fucking Abdul the Butcher. You name it. So he's going <laughs> to chop it up with us. Yeah, we need that. We know Abdul the Barber, man. Shout out to Abdul the Barber. Yeah. That dude, uh, Shout out to the home. Yeah, Abdul the Barber. He tried to get his uh, cuckoo cow, but he done flew over to Cuckoo's Nets. We couldn't get him, you know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> so we look forward. We look forward to We still want to have Cuckoo on the show, you know what I'm saying? It's all good. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, man, I'm telling you, man, shit is moving. In the, I'm liking how it's going, it's moving in the right direction. Brandon's uh, booking us on different shows for interviews. You know, we're going to be right. on the Strip Radio. We're going to be on the Kill Show. we got several other shows we're going to be on, you know what I'm saying, to promote what we're doing. Also, this is the year, the fifth anniversary of, of uh, the Murder Master Music Show. Um, mm-hmm. So we're going to do a lot of celebrating this year and try to do big things. The media, uh, media is already fucking with us again like they do. And we broke, uh, we broke, the, the the fucking sound barrier with the wrestling shit from uh, Steve Gray talking about <laughs> Hulk Hogan. That shit's everywhere. That fucking shit, uh, MMA sites. <laughs> you yeah. name it. And then, uh, then we came back and hit with the Swifty D12. That's going pretty much viral right now. Found about 10, 15 different sites. People don't understand, man. They think, uh, why, why, why do you? Why does it matter for you to get into the mainstream and this, 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 and that? It matters because we are the voice of the underground. We need to exactly. let them know that you know what I'm saying we're going to keep repping this shit. You know what I'm saying? I want people to see exactly. what the fuck we're doing here. So of course it matters. Some people, are, oh man, I, I, I don't want no press. Nah, nah, nah. nah, man, if you if you real with yourself. You want to be proud to be able to say, you know what, fresh kid, I salute to my career as a new fucking compilation out. You want to be able to tell exactly. the mainstream that K Reno dropped seven albums on one day, or Greenway mm-hmm. just got out the, the, the feds and just dropped a brand new album. You want people to know this shit. You know what I'm saying? Let them know that these guys are still doing their fucking thing. And um, that's what it's all about, man. So uh, shout out yeah, to everybody yeah. that's on the same page with us. You know what I'm saying? Not you coattail motherfuckers. I'm talking about the one that's that's really yeah. in it for the right reasons. Piggybacking ass motherfuckers. You don't be fucking with the piggybackers. You know what I'm saying? Y'all get your water cut off. Matter of fact, man, that's how we're going to... Man, we got to get out of here. Like that. <laughs> this is the new song by uh, Two Tone featuring Mac Montes and uh, T-Rock. Man, cut your water off. Because, you know, when you got some, some dudes that are lurking around your circle... 
that are just, just basically leeches and parasites feeding off of your blood, and you got to cut their fucking water off. That's what we're going to do. 